Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Douglas Habian, and I want to thank you for tuning in and supporting me. Today's video is going to be about how to connect to an Android phone via ADB over Wi-Fi. So we are getting rid of that pesky USB cable that we have had to use in previous videos to connect to the computer. Over here on the left side of my screen, I am going to free up some real estate and clear that. Now, um, so I'm going to type LSUSB and it's going to let us know that one, I have the Samsung phone connected to the computer via the USB cable. Prerequisites for this, if you don't already know, you do have to have ADB installed on your machine. You do also need to have the developer settings option enabled on your phone and to have gone into those settings and enabled USB debugging. From the output of LS USB on the screen, you see two things. One, I have my Samsung phone connected to the machine. And two, I also have my external Wi-Fi adapter. And for me, because I do not have an internal Wi-Fi card because I have removed it, this is how I connect to the internet. So that is why I'm showing you this right here. One of the prerequisites as well is that for this to work, both your phone and your machine that you're doing this from need to be connected to a network and they need to be connected to the same network. And that is one of the downsides to this is before when we were doing this, all we needed was a USB cable. Neither the machine nor the phone needed to be connected to any network. And we were able to communicate with the phone, access the phone through the shell, et cetera, et cetera. But for this to work, you do need to have both the devices connected to the network and the same network at that. So with that understood, we're gonna move forward. Now to save time, I have already connected both my machine and my phone to the same network. You can see up here that I have network connectivity and as well on the phone, I have network connectivity. If I go over here to the side of the terminal on the, on the left side, I can run ifconfig and I have an IP address 192.168.1.157. I'm gonna ADB shell into the phone and I'm gonna run ifconfig inside of the phone. I need to get the IP address that has been assigned to my Android phone. And I can see here that that IP address is 192.168.1.137. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to exit from the shell. Now this is going to be incredibly simple to do. Um, basically one command, two commands, and this is, this is done for us. As long as you have all the prerequisites out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type ADB TCP IP followed by a port number. And I'm going to choose the standard port for this, which is going to be 5555. Now, when I hit enter, you're going to see a couple things happen. So I want you to understand this before I, I go ahead and hit enter. One, you're going to see over here on... Um, the side of the screen, you're going to see that my emulator is going to disappear because it's going to disconnect the phone and it's going to reconnect in a different mode. You're also going to see over here in this area, it will say the device left and then it will say it arrived again. So if I, um, if I run LS USB, uh, we see what this output is. Uh, right now, I'm not sure if it's going to change to a different identifier or not after I do this, but we'll see what happens. So back on the main portion of my terminal emulator here, I'm going to go ahead and hit return. 
and you see that the device the device left and then it, it arrived again and it disconnected from um, from my application that is performing the screen mirroring. Now if I go back over here and I run LS USB again, we do see that the machine is recognizing the phone as being plugged in via USB. Now that we've um, typed the first command and to give you a little bit more of an explanation as to what that actually did, uh, that basically um, set up a port on the phone via ADB to listen um, for an uh, incoming connection. So now that we've set up that uh, port to listen for an incoming connection back on our machine, we can now connect to the phone and we have to provide it with the phone's IP address um, and, uh, and, and that's it, we should be able to uh, connect. So what I'm gonna do right now is uh, if I point my camera down here to this area, uh, this white um, uh, USB cable, to type C, this is actually running over here to my external Wi-Fi adapter. And that's how I have internet on my machine here. This, um, this one right here is running to an SSD, which is how I'm running Kali Linux. And this one in the middle is currently attached uh, to this phone, and that is how I have an ADB connection right now and how I'm able to uh, run this screen mirroring application. It is because I'm connected with this USB cable via, via ADB. Now that we ran that command to set the... Um, uh, to set the phone to listen on port 555, um, five, we can actually disconnect uh, the cable now and we should be able to connect to the phone um, over, over Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this and I want you to, to watch what happens. So let me disconnect it and you see that the phone is disconnected from the machine and once again the screen the screen mirroring application disappeared and um, the device left okay now what I'm gonna do is I am going to attempt to connect to the phone from my machine over over the network and I'll do that by running ADB connect followed by the IP address of the phone, and then we have to supply it with the port, which is 5555. And if all is well, that will allow us to connect to the phone. I hit enter. And first, it says fail to authenticate, but that is just a timing issue because as soon as I pressed that, a screen popped up on my phone asking me to accept another fingerprint. And if I run it again, it will say that we are already connected. So we are actually connected to the phone right now via ADB over Wi-Fi. And to prove that to you, I am going to open up um, my camera on my phone and I'm going to run the screen mirroring application again, start that up. And as you can see on the screen, we are once again connected to the phone, running our screen mirroring application. But if you look closely, that uh, cable that was plugged in, that cable is no longer plugged in. There is no cable that is connected to this phone. So if you've never done this before, if you've never seen this, this is, this is definitely a very, very cool thing that you're able to do. And I am going to go over here to the left side of my terminal emulator. I'm going to exit out of the camera, 
go back into my recorder and on the left side of my terminal emulator I am going to shell into the phone ADB shell and I am inside of the phone and you know in, in fact I'm going to I'm going to do this as well let me do this I, I really want to bring this point home so I'm going to pull the phone mirroring application back to the forefront of the screen now I want you to pay attention to this okay it's gonna it's gonna end up in the background again but what I want you to see is um, when you look at all of these uh, uh, notifications and so forth up here at the top and you just look at the phone in general I'm gonna ADB shell back into the phone and I want you to see that there is no indication on this phone whatsoever that there is a machine that is um, remotely connected to the phone. I am inside of the phone tap dancing through the file system and there's no indication of this whatsoever on this phone. And I really want to bring this point home. So back on my terminal, I'm going to exit from the phone. Now pay attention to the phone in the background and tell me do you see any indication? Is there any notification popping up that is saying, hey, somebody's inside of your phone? No, there is no change whatsoever. But I'm inside of the phone. The IP address is 192.168.1.137. I have a uh, route to the internet. I can ping 1.1.1.1 and the ICMP packets will reach their destination. So I'm sending pings out to 1.1.1.1 and you can see that 10 pings were received with 0% packet loss. I can look at the file system. I can move around the file system. I'm going to move into uh, the bin directory and list out the binaries. Um, I will move into system list out what is inside of the system. Who am I? ID. Uname dash A to get information about the kernel. Okay, that's incredibly powerful and, and I, I hope that you understand what, what this means. Um, this is a remote connection over a network inside of the phone and other than a prompt that popped up at the very beginning to accept a fingerprint, which if we really wanted to, uh, we could find a way to uh, mask that or make it so that the user uh, did not see that prompt. In fact, we, we could change some settings and if we were able to get it to accept the fingerprint one time, we could change the settings so that it remained persistent and we never had to do it again. And then anytime we wanted to, we could remotely connect to this phone and there's going to be no indication whatsoever that this is happening to the user that has this phone. So I hope you found that useful. Um, thank you for watching. This is Douglas Habian and until next time.